About a year ago, I made a promise to myself that I would learn a new skill, something that I could have fun with and improve my skill set. The skill that I chose was game development, but I didn't realize when I picked it that my initial thinking was very, very flawed. You see, it didn't take me long to find out that game development isn't just one skill. It's a multitude of skills that all harmonize with each other to create one cohesive project. It's a lot, more than I expected, but I'm hooked and I'm learning more every day. Here's a few things that I learned so far. When I first picked game development as a skill that I wanted to learn, the way that I was viewing it was that it was a subset of programming. While I wasn't technically wrong, this completely disregards all the other skills that come together to make a game. It only took until it was time to make my player character before it hit me. Oh, wait, I need to make art too. Even the skill bars that I've been using in my videos to represent my experience don't come close to covering everything involved in game development. There's also storytelling, animation, sound design, game design, data management, level design, rigging, UX design, project management, quality assurance, marketing, and holy cow, there's a lot to this. Now, we're all human and it's much more efficient to focus on what you're best at by collaborating with other people so they can fill in the gaps with what they're best at. Unless you're like me, I just wanna learn new things. So even though art, for instance, might not be my strong suit, maybe I can improve it. And the only way to improve it is to practice. The next thing I learned is best illustrated with a story. A few weeks ago, I had just added a high score system to my game that stores the 10 best scores. Everything seemed to work well during my playtests, but when I brought the game into my work for some coworkers to try, I noticed that sometimes high scores weren't being saved. I went home that day and spent what felt like forever staring at the code trying to figure out what the issue was. Nothing I did seemed to fix the issue until I closed Godot and decided to do some cleaning. I was literally cleaning a toilet when it hit me what the issue was. When a new high score was number 10 out of 10, I was inserting the new score in the number 10 position, then immediately deleting the score that was in the number 10 position, which isn't the old score anymore. It's the new one that I just put in there. It might seem counterintuitive, but if you're stuck on a problem, walking away might just be what your brain needs to gain a fresh perspective and figure out a solution. And if you're really stuck, maybe go clean a toilet. While working on my game, everything I programmed fell into one of two categories, things that the player will notice and things that the player would only notice if it was gone. The things that the player will notice are the obvious things like new abilities, new enemies, a boss, or a high score system. These are some of my favorite things to add because it feels like the game is growing, like I'm adding more fun into the game. Then there's the other category, the one that I didn't like so much at the beginning, but as the game progressed, I began to appreciate more and more. These are the things that make your game better, but if done right, they're invisible to the player. They're things like making sure your game works on different screen sizes, fixing bugs, and generally making sure the game runs how it's supposed to. But if you did a good job, the player isn't going to notice them, and that's why I wasn't the biggest fan of working on this part of the game at first. I knew it was necessary, but sometimes I would be working for weeks doing things like fixing bugs and making the game run smoother, and then afterward I want to show people what I've been working on, but sometimes there's not much to show. It's fun giving the game to someone and saying, check out this new laser upgrade I made, but it doesn't have the same impact when the patch notes are, hey look, the collision shape around the player works correctly now. But here's the thing, what I learned over this time is that this is okay, and it's part of the process. Not everything that you work on is going to be this amazing feature that will be highlighted in trailers for the game, but they're just as important as any other feature, sometimes more important if we're talking about fixing game-breaking bugs. The game is improving, and that's what you can't ever let yourself forget. Finally, there is something that I kind of knew before I started game development, but I don't think I fully grasped it until now. If there's something that you want to happen in your game, you need to make it happen. This might sound obvious, but before I began this project, there were certain things that just seemed to work when playing video games that I never stopped to wonder why they worked. For instance, if you wanted to make a player, 
it's not just a matter of dragging one in. First, you need to make the sprite, but it can't move yet, so you need to give it movement. And what controls are going to make the character move? How will the character move? How fast will the character be? Will it be affected by gravity? Will it have collision? What happens when it collides with a wall? What happens when it collides with an enemy? Every little feature that a game has, no matter how small, is the result of a decision that someone had to make. And this led me to an epiphany that I had. I'm pretty sure that video games are magic. The more I learn about how to make games, the more I'm forced to deal with the fact that how video games even exist is insane to me. The amount of decisions that need to be made just to make a simple menu is crazy. And the more I learn, the more questions I have. But I love every second of it. The fact that anyone can learn how to create this magic too is incredible. It's a lot of work and a lot of decisions, but with each decision that you make, you're putting your own stamp on the game. If you're making your own game, it's because of you that the character has a sprite. It's because of you the character is able to move. It's because of you the character can collide with enemies, walls, and whatever else you decide to put into the world. If you're making a game right now, and I know a lot of you are, you're making actual magic happen, and I can see that now. There are a lot of things that I learned by trying to make my first game, but this is the biggest one. So keep making that magic, and I'll keep doing the same. With Escape the Shape finished, I've already started the planning on my next game. I'm really looking forward to learning new things and probably encountering a bug or two along the way. If you want to join me on this journey, feel free to subscribe. I'm also working on starting a Discord server, so look out for that in the near future. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Keep learning.